Something is amiss. Something feels wrong. I don't know what to do with my hands and it's freaking me out. For all the current Nissan GK Tech fans, no, your eyes are not playing tricks on you. You read the title correctly on this one, folks. We are finally dipping our toes into developing a new chassis from a manufacturer other than Nissan. Who'd have thunk it? Here we are stepping into the GT86 world, and to kick us off, we're starting with the Toyota GT86 BRZ FRS Bolt-On Angle Kit. What even are these words? You can now upgrade your new age tofu delivery car with GK Tech stuff. I know it feels blasphemous to me too. And for all you Toyota peeps just tuning in, welcome to the world's finest how-to vids. Grab a hold of that beautiful iconic GK Tech black box and notice this is how the steering kit will come. Nice, clean, and simple. Wiggling the box like Zach, however, will take you years of practice so you may as well not even try. Flipping the lid shows off the greatness and simplicity of all that is needed to give that 8.6 some steering zazz. Let's start off with the dust boots for the new guys. The bearings we offer in all of our suspension parts are common sized bearings that are PTFE lined. However, we do offer that extra bit of protection and luxury with these rubber dust boots. They're optional, so the choice is yours and choose wisely. Next up is the replacement ball joint nut. Given that we have to bolt in the angle kit on over the ball joint, this adds some girth to the setup. And although that's what you've always hoped and dreamed for, in this case, it covers the split pin hole, which means we need to change the OEM nut to a serrated flange locking nut for your safety as well as the safety of others. Next up we have the ball joint spacer which slips between the knuckle and the angle kit assembly all casual like, ensuring that they are correctly spaced, that the kit is running on the correct plane and not bolting up all willy nilly, and is nice and flat which we will touch on inappropriately later. Putting those puppies down and picking up the tie rod studs. These little traffic cones with hats slip through the angle kit bracket and then through the OEM knuckle. Where the old tie rod used to be and then they're locked off with the serrated flange locking nut again for that peace of mind and or safety now lastly we have what you've all been waiting for the simple wizardly tailored yield bolt-on angle leveraging lever structure or s-w-t-y-b-a-l-l-s for short not only will the panties of girls well actually probably more the guys hit the ground when you roll up with this kit fitted and you'll experience faster steering as well as obviously increasing the steering lock to dank levels as the title states this assembly is jam-packed and features ptfe lined bearings which we do carry on the spare shelf if you do need a replacement there are also a common sized bearing so any local bearing supply worldwide should stock them if you find yourself desperately needing some this assembly also features shims top and bottom of said bearing to adjust bump steer on the fly. And then you have the high clearance steel extenders which are made from 4130 chromoly steel to obviously adjust your toe. And then you have the Ackerman adjustment. For the dudes that know what they're doing or don't I guess and just want to brag about having Ackerman adjustment. As an added bonus we also include instructions aka the artist formerly known as assembly guide or better known as love letters. These give you everything you need to know and maybe even a poem or two about Ackerman. Now that you know what you're getting let's set the bracket on the bench so we can peep it all complete like and ready to go on your whip. Now as you heard me say less than 4.2 seconds ago this bracket has Ackerman adjustment. This can be seen here by the offset inserts we've conveniently whittled into the design. As this setup currently sits on the screen the tie rod is closest to the outside of the car meaning at this setting you will have less Ackerman. Now if you want to change it we have to flip the assembly remove the bolt and insert then flip the assembly the other way and remove that other side insert having it facing so that the tie rod is further inward. That would mean that you have more Ackerman and more Ackerman means more lead wheel and less trailing wheel. We're going to leave it on this setting for this setup so we can insert the other insert and bolt that in. And that, sir, would be the completed assembly with your Ackerman setting of choice. But before we let you run off and install this, Mr. Hotshot, let's talk about bump steer adjustment real quick. We've incorporated bump steer adjustment through the use of two 3mm shims at the top and bottom of the rose joint. Basically, you want your inner tie rod to be parallel with the ball joint as much as possible at your chosen ride height. This is a super simple way to explain bump steer. 
But if that doesn't make sense to you, then you just leave the top one at the top and the bottom one at the bottom as the default setting. Lastly, the super uber important step we don't want anyone to forget is liquid insurance. Unwind the bolt that we just put in by hand, yes we know, and put a generous goop of that lockjaw juice on the end of the thread and thread that sucker back on down into the assembly. And here is your SWTYBALLS assembly, all complete and ready to be tossed into your car. Speaking of the car, head on over to that, loosen and wind back on the locking nut of the inner tie rod and get your pointy nose pliers and rip that split pin out of the tie rod end. Now, if you took your pre-worky this AM, you should be able to get that out in one swift yank. Get that ratchet on the nut, crack said nut loose, wind it upwards a little bit, leaving it on for now to catch the inner tie rod end when it drops down. Now, get your selected basher of choice and give the knuckle only a couple of love taps, which cracks the seat of the inner tie rod end. Now, continue to wind the top nut off, removing the inner tie rod from the end of the knuckle, and we will wind it back on just so we don't lose it. Now, you can take the entire tie rod assembly off by rotating it counterclockwise and put that somewhere safe just in case you need it for a rainy day. Now head down south and remove the split pin from the ball joint. Again, the super train can get this done in one fell swoop. Throw your ratchet on the nut, crack it open like your favorite barley pop, and wind it upwards. Now throw your ball joint spacer straight over the top of said ball joint. Can't really make a mistake on this step, can you? Put one side of the bracket up and over the ball joint thread and wind on the serrated nut, then lift and maneuver the bracket to fit up to the tie rod side of the knuckle, and holy moly, what do we have here, Batman? Well, that's right, Robin. The bracket's now making unholy matrimony to the dust shield when trying to be put into this position. Thanks, Toyota. There are two ways we can tackle this problem. Option number one, we simply hold the bracket to the dust shield and mark the position of where we want to cut, which we are demoing on the screen here. Or if you don't have a grinder and you want to keep the dust shield untouched, you can simply remove the dust shield and hey, you've saved 0.00044296 pounds by doing it this way. This is the route we have chosen to take with our setup. To do this method, first loosen and remove the top caliper bolt and wind that off all the way. Then swoop downish to the second caliper bolt, loosening and removing that as well. If you have a super handy dandy stand that is uber conveniently located right next to the hub, swing that whole thing over onto that stand and let it rest there for the moment. All that's left are these three lonesome duff style bolts holding that ultra heavy dust shield in its place, zap those three bolts off, and frisbee the ever-living shit out of that thing into the bin. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel, bin is Australian for trash can. Now swing the entire assembly back onto the hub and install the top and bottom bolts into the caliper. Then tighten the top bolt as well as the second bolt on down. Once tight, torque those down to the specs shown right here on the screen. Now that you've achieved your weight loss gains, we can focus on getting that bracket back up to the knuckle. Whip the bracket up into position and go ahead and slip through the tie rod stud from the bottom to the top. Then wind the nut on from the top side getting that all snug. Then get your perfectly sized extender, which in my humble opinion is a great size and you should be totally happy with, and wind that onto the rose joint a couple of threads, then onto the inner tie rod a couple of threads. That means it's even. Next, wind it onto both, getting that toe into a perfectly aligned straight ahead position, doing the best you can with your eyeballs, ensuring you get maximum thread engagement on both the rose joint and inner tie rod side. Now, what we want to make damn sure of is that on compression or droop, the locking nut does not make contact with the steering bracket as you can see here on the screen. Notice we have the nut wound back enough that it doesn't make contact with the bracket at all. Neat. Once you've used your highly calibrated baby blues to eyeball a line the living crap out of everything, hold the extender in the middle and go ahead and tighten the locking nut on the rose joint side, then swing over and tighten the locking nut on the tie rod end side as best you can, ensuring both wheels are pointing straight. Now go to the tie rod end stud and tighten and torque that down to the spec shown right here on the screen. Then slip on down to the ball joint nut, which we have replaced with the flange serrated nut, again due to the size increase of the bracket and shims, and tighten and torque that down to the spec shown on the screen as well. Now go down to the main bolt that runs through the guts of the rose joint and tighten and torque that down to the specs on the screen. And that's it. You're absolutely dunskies, my guy. Takumi's dad may or may not let you make your first tofu delivery over old Mount Akita. But you now have the added benefits of faster steering, bump steer correction slash adjustment, as well as changing your Ackerman and most importantly, more goddamn steering lock. Yeehaw!
Speaking of yeehaws, these three dudes are responsible for giving you a couple minutes of informative, yet auditorially and visually pleasing entertainment on the weekly. And since we're now making Toyota parts, that one weird car over on the right finally gets its vindication, even though it's a Lexus and it thinks it's a Toyota. If you somehow did install this to your exhaust, please call a pro and have them fix or install this properly for you whilst giving you a good smack. Shoot us an email if you have any questions about the SWTYBALLS. And this has been Officer Dan, Johnny Caps, and Baby Powder Zach with another GK Tech How To. Peace.